and I am back and live. We're just waiting for the uh, game to kick in on the stream. Oh, that was hot. I don't know what the reason is, but it always takes a bit for it to... And I usually have to tab out and in again to get rid of the amazing level of glare. But I'm just waiting for it to kick in, so I'm just going to sit back. I'm not touching anything. No hand on the keyboard. There we go. And now we're off. I'm going to actually try and talk to my people again and see if they'll talk to me. Maybe they will. If not, it's fine. They can keep their secrets. Nothing new from him. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk while I'm on? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I won't mind talking more later, though. Okay, they won't talk to me until I finish the first, quote, real mission. I guess the DLC didn't count. Well, fine then. Be that way. I had some tasty chicken wings. It's really good. We're gonna find Rex's armor now. Now, thankfully for some people, I'm sure, I've decided I'm not going to read all the planets. But I will stop over them just so people can see the information if they're interested. I'll just wait a second or two each time I pull up a planet so we can read all the information, like pause the stream, read the information, do whatever you want with it. It'll just save a lot of time. So I'll give it another second or two, that should be long enough. This is the planet that uh, Rex's armor is on, so... Wow, that one doesn't have anything to say at all, really. It's just a pair or a sentence with its planetary stats. That's kind of sad. All right, let's do this. I will bring Rex, of course. And this time I think I'll bring... Yeah, why not? We'll bring the terrible two. 
They're not really terrible, though. They got me through a pretty tough area without too much difficulty. I could bring Caden and Ashley again. That would be interesting, but no, let's go with what we know works. I'm only going to finish this mission, and then I'm going to end the stream. But it should take me about an hour. Maybe a bit more. The hidden structure is the last place I want to go, because that's where the armor is. And this is how you can really tell that it's definitely not a blind playthrough. I'm gonna force Rex to love me. Wait, that sounds terrible. But this might make it so I don't have to shoot him later. I can't remember if that helps or not, but it won't matter. I'll have enough charisma that I'll be able to talk about it anyway. But that's not the same thing as my new restriction that says that I can't use uh what do you call it? Oh no. That's fine, electronics. And Garrus. There we go. There was a codex. As the human race expands its territory and raises the general standard of living, demand for industrial resources continues to grow. Many planets, moons, and asteroids contain a wealth of resources, but many systems have barely been charted, let alone thoroughly surveyed. Unmanned probes are one solution, but they are often lost to space hazards, unforeseen circumstances, or theft by salvagers. In recent years, AGES, the Alliance Geological Service, has offered bounties to private individuals or teams willing to perform mineralogical surveys on the frontier. This survey data is made publicly available to further corporate development. Due to the cost of travel and the dangers of operating on hostile worlds, it is, a, it is rarely a profitable endeavor. Light metals. Metals with a low atomic weight are often used in the construction of spacecraft and vehicles. Heavy metals. Metals with higher atomic weights are used to construct equipment components. The platinum group elements are particularly useful. Rare earths. Most useful materials in this category are radioactives or magnets. Gases. Various gases are required to support all known forms of sapient life. Some are commonly used as fuel. Sounds like a winner. Journal, that's all good. Wait, it's still saying, oh, Rex hasn't leveled up, of course. There we go. We're going to make Rex into an absolute monster. And there's our uh, light minerals. That 
No, I'm not even going to do that off screen. I will be collecting everything, but I will say on my screen, Planet Exploration Stream, just so if people find that really boring, they know to skip it. Oh, come on. Dang it. Okay, let's try that one more time. I'm not, I don't want to pay for doing this, but I will if I fail again. There we go. Medical interface. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. All right, we got that. I'm going to go here. This is why people might find planet exploration missions to be a bore to watch. I'm actually going to be doing them now because that'll save a lot of time in the end. Once I get through all of that, then I can just do the main quest and just knock them out fast. Just boom, 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 boom. I guess technically it doesn't save time when you think about it, but. Get up. There we go. I just like to think that it saves a bit of time to do it this way. And I think this is why I do quite well in the game after the Bring Down the Sky DLC. It's because I'm going to go to all the planets. I'll get a lot of experience. Most likely I'll be at a... pretty close to top level before I start even the first three planets. But that's good, because that means I can just rush them and get, get it over and done with. Especially since there's only like four or five main... I'm sorry, there's like six main uh, dungeons, in, or dungeons, six main missions in the entire game, so... Matriarch writings. Now I'm going to just go straight down and get that. Uh, and then I'm going to go over to there.
I forgot that those guys were there. That felt really cheap. Shooting them with a big ass cannon. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of bad guys here, so let's let the bodies hit the floor. I know who runs this place. Have you been here before? No, but I was planning to come here before you and I met. This place belongs to a Turian scum named Ton Actus. It's a long story, but he's got something that belongs to me. All right, I'll be right back. Just give me a second. Sorry about that, I was in a bit of pain, I had to correct some things. Well, what is it? Family armor. It's been with us for over five generations. Turian military took it from my father's father, after the war. Somehow this ass wound up with it. I want it back. We'll get it back. Now let's move. Right behind you. Alright, here we go. Quick save. Let the bodies hit the floor. Fortunately, there's a very high chance there's going to be a lot of my own bodies hitting the floor. Come on, buddy. Of course, they're going to be smart and not come running. too far away. Man, that sucks because snipers are one-hit kill monsters. Okay, I can kind of see where that guy is. That's not always a good thing, though, to get the pirate attention. Okay, I 
got you now. That did not last very long. There we go. Garrus is down again. Useless. The only thing I don't like about whatever is I don't have unity yet, which means I can't res them. Counts as lift strength. Dang it. There we go, nine deaths. That's okay. boss. That, that was good. Not really. See if we can convince some of them to come and play. Sniper, you definitely don't want to play with that way. Pirate wouldn't be so bad. Run, run, Shepard.
fire. There we go. Who's that? Uh, it is still a pirate. doing much to this thing. Oh, there's the boss. Beautiful. you. There we go. It's one more down. I know the boss is still in that corner though. There he is. Here I can hit him. Alright. Khan is almost dead. Tons dead. That doesn't mean I made this significantly easier by any means. That sniper is still going to be hard to deal with. One good hit. Two hits. Good. Okay, let's go carefully, guys. Okay, that's where the pirate is. It's right about here, so I should be able to... No, I can't elevate him.
got another one. Good as new. Come on, round the corner. There we go. One more guy, I think. Oh, this was stupid. The heck is he? Oh, he must be up here. Yeah, he's up here. It's fine. There we go. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap. But at least I've got it back. I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Rex touches his grandfather's armor, his expression thoughtful perhaps? Krogan are hard to read. Then he shakes off his bemusement and grips his gun with renewed purpose. Time to move on. Overall, I think I'm doing alright if I've only got 10 deaths so far. all the lovely loot we got there. Now to find a good weapon. I'm not going to worry about that. Shotgun is what I'm worried about. There we go. That one's just a pure upgrade in like every way. That's not a good weapon. Could use that, that would be amazing. All right, 
that worked out way better than I thought it was going to. Still standing. Yeah, let's check here. If I don't see anything, I'm just gonna leave. It doesn't look like there's anything here though. drive all the way down to there. Just leave it for another second. 
There we go. There we go. I'll just do that again. That way if anyone actually does want to see what it says, all the flavor text as they call it, I guess. If you don't want to read it, you totally can just pause the stream. Message after. coming in. Passing it through. General distress call. Sacred Angel Medical Transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. Emergency landing. Argos. Communications failing. Life support. Emergency transponder. Long blast. These are. Oh, it's a heat warning planet. Give that a few seconds. So yeah, people can pause it if they want to read it. And now I'm going to land on this planet. If I remember correctly, I think there's a chance I'm going to die. If it is actually what I think is down there. All right, level two hazard. Hazards only really matter if you get out of the Mako. I can show you what happens. As soon as I get out of the Mako, you'll see the hazard level going up. Once that gets up to full, you, I think you'll either die right away or you'll die really, really quickly. I forget which it is. Pretty sure you just start dying really quickly. And depending on the strength of the hazard level, the faster that bar fills. Like level 3 hazard world, that bar fills really quick. Whereas level 1 feels like you can take a nice leisurely stroll throughout the entire planet before the bar will fill. Found some thorium. There's a wreckage. The signal must be coming from there. Careful, Shepard. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yes, it's a trap! Wondering who was shooting at me. Well, that just blew up. Okay, that's fine. We go up to the anomaly now.
get up there. You can do it. Come on. Nope, 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 not back down. Uh, Alright, back down I go. Try from the other angle. gives us an insignia. While searching the records, you find a very old letter stamped with the Gothis colony insignia. Unfortunately, the text is indecipherable. Yeah, because it's old. It's very old. Alright, we'll go here. And we'll go to the bottom of the map there. All right, up we go. Down we go. Whoa, come on, turn. There we go. can do it. There we go. Good little buggy that thought it could. A little buggy that could. That's what the Mako is. Come on. You can make it. There we go. There's the thing. Go get the thing. Stop. Moving out. Rex, you're in the way. There we go. Now we're going to go to the bottom here. By the time I get there, I'll probably be the end of the little mini screen tonight. It's only an hour because I, w I just wanted to make up for the hour I missed because of my doctor's appointment. But tomorrow is going to be another full day from 1 to 6. Thursday and Friday are going to be my usual days off. I can't 
get up there. Oh, I can't get up there anyway. Let's turn around. I got stuck. There we go. That's one I know of, so I don't need to worry about that. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Alright. We'll turn around. That's fine, Mako. Come on, turn. See? You can get up there. No problem. close to that arrow. Yeah, I thought so. I was like, I've been traveling quite a bit. That arrow can't be too much further. It looks like that's clear. We shall return to the Normandy. Now I'm going to go back and talk to Rex, and I think that'll be it for tonight. Now we'll get up and start working again tomorrow to get through the side planets. All the side planets, that's a lot to go through, but... I'm hoping to get through that in about two, maybe three streams, and then we'll just get through the rest of the game. See, at this point, Mass Effect isn't very long. In Mass Effect 2, it becomes pretty long. So, we've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's run to the core. I can tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have. I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well, and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. 
It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. <laughs> what did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other work on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. So long, Rex. Shepard. Well, that was a bit of information. Let's see if Ashley will talk to us yet. Commander, you have a minute to talk. Oh boy, okay. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, we have to learn to rely on ourselves. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the service garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. You're lucky. I lost my family on Mindoir. Are you related to anyone I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. I read about Mindoir. The Alliance screwed the pooch on that one. Should have had a bigger garrison. Is that why you're out here? To take the fight to the pirates? No. The future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Yeah. I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the mud. He spent the next five minutes tuning me out for gold breaking. Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one I know who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Oh, Lord. You went to the Makapak boot camp, too? Yeah. Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there. Kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> All right. I 
can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Would you kiss anyone I ordered you to? That depends, sir. If you ordered me to kiss a superior officer, that would be a violation of the regs concerning fraternization. That would make it an illegal order. I'd be required to decline and relieve you of command. Sir. What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you got there sooner, Commander. Oh, okay. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest? Yes. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. Sir, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. Alright. Looks like the relationship has been started with her. Commander, how are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I knew of him about his accomplishments or seen his picture on the days after a big arrest. He's taken my resignation for me. That's tough, but you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Sarah. My father's a CSEC man, too. Well, do things right, but don't do them in all the sense. Things are made too rash. Hey there, Red. Hey, Drake. Death count seems awfully low. Yes, yes it does. I've been doing amazing. You were asked to be a Spectre? I couldn't be happier, well, I was but... as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. I could make the game even harder, but... He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power. <laughs> no and yes, I am the goober. I like you, Commander. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can, but Saren's not going to. The only thing I can think of, though. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop, and neither do you, Harris. I see what you mean, but I'll think about it. Thanks, man. Hmm. Yeah, I can think of a few ways to make it even harder, but I'm not sure I want to mention it because then I'm going to end up having to do that. I've learned my lesson. While Turians are individuals with personal desires, their instinct is to equate the self with the group and set aside personal desires for the good of all. Turians are taught to have a strong sense of personal accountability the Turian honor that other races find so remarkable. Turians are taught to own every decision they make, good or ill. The worst sin they can make in the eyes of their people is to lie about their own actions. Turians who murder will try to get away with it, but if directly questioned, most will confess the crime. Turians have a strong inclination toward public service and self-sacrifice, so they tend to be poor entrepreneurs. To compensate, they accept the mercantile bolus as a client race, offering protection in exchange for their fiscal expertise. The Turian military is the center of their society. It is not just an armed force, it is an all-encompassing public works organization. The military police are also the civic police. The fire brigades serve the civilian population as well as military facilities. The Corps of Engineers builds and maintains spaceports, schools, water purification plants, and power stations. The Merchant Marine ensures that all worlds get needed resources. And yes, yes I have, because I've been thinking about it, and I can think of, off the top of my head, two more things I could do to make this game play through unbelievably hard. But I'm not going to say what they are, because if I do and then I have to do it, I would really be kicking my own ass. 
Although they lack the brutality of the Krogan, the skill of the Asari, and the virtuosity of the humans, the Turian military is formidable discipline. Officers and NCOs are lifers with years of field experience. Enlisted personnel are thoroughly trained and stay calm under fire. Turian units don't break. Even if their entire line collapses, they fall back in order, settling ambush or setting ambushes as they go. A popular saying holds, you'll only see a Turian's back once he's dead. Boot camp begins on the 15th birthday. Soldiers receive a year of training before being assigned to a field unit. Officers train for even longer. Most serve until the age of 30, at which point they become part of the reserves. Even if they suffer injuries preventing frontline service, most do support work behind the lines. Biotics are uncommon. While admired for their exacting skills, biotics moment, or motives are not always fully trusted by the common soldier. The Turians prefer to assign their biotics to specialist teams called cabals. Command and control is decentralized and flexible. Individual squads can call for artillery and air support. They make extensive use of combat drones for light duties and practice combined arms. Infantry operates with armor, supported by overhead gunships. Strategically, they are methodical and patient and dislike risky operations. Tradition is important. Each legion has a full-time staff of historians who chronicle their battle or chronicle its battle honors in detail. The oldest have records dating back to the Turian Iron Age. If a legion is destroyed in battle, it is reconstituted rather than replaced. The Turians recruit auxiliary units from conquered or absorbed minor races. Auxiliaries are generally light infantry or armored cavalry units that screen and support the main Turian formations. At the conclusion of their service in the auxiliaries, recruits are granted Turian citizenship. That's the point of this run, though. That I'm beginning to believe that, Drake, because, yeah... The way I thought to make it harder would make this game almost borderline impossible. Well, not not true. It would it would make it really 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 tough though. Not the only reason I'm not mentioning it is because I'm a completionist at heart, and doing it the hardest way possible would <laughs> hurt me more. Yeah, that's about right. At about the time the Salarians and Asaris were forming the council, the Turians were embroiled in a bitter civil war. The Unification War, as it was later named, began with hostilities between the colonies furthest from the Turian homeworld, Palavin. These colonies were run by local chieftains, many of whom had distanced themselves from the hierarchy. Without the galvanizing influence of the government, the colonies became increasingly isolated and xenophobic. Colonists began wearing emblems or facial markings to differentiate themselves from members of other colonies, and open hostilities became common. When war finally broke out, the hierarchy maintained strict, diplo strict diplomacy and refused to get involved. After several years of fighting, Less than a dozen factions remained, and the hierarchy finally intervened. By that time, the chieftains were too weak to resist. They were forced to put an end to fighting and renew their alliance to the hierarchy. Though peace was restored, it took several decades for animosity between colonists to fade completely. To this day, most Turians still wear the facial markings of their home colonies as a point of interest. The Turian term barefaced refers to one who is beguiling or not to be trusted. It is also a slang term for politicians. Well, politicians always need more. It's your fault you're friends with this sadomasochist. Yeah, apparently, but that's okay. I don't mind. Although, like I said, I am rethinking some of my life choices. I 
All right. I'm just thinking, should I say how to make this game as hard as possible, or should I just pretend everything is good? Ah, screw it. I said I wanted pain, so I'm going to show you how to make this game hard. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any of the side missions until the end of the game. Which means I'm going to have to go through the main story very low level in comparison to where I normally am. Do the sides along with the main. I'm I not that cool. To worry about that here. <laughs> but old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, kind of missing. Yeah, Drake, you have no idea how. Uh how bad it would be for me to try to get through all of the main quests right now at the level I'm at. I mean, I... Uh, how do I word this? I, I think it's doable, but I also think that it would be levels of pain that I don't think I've ever experienced, especially for being on uh, insanity difficulty. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I have always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the Michael fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Alright, now she just I should go. goes back through her See same later. regular spiel. You know what? I'm going to show you one main quest right now to give you an idea of how rough it would be. Oh, I understand, uh, Red. I'm exactly the same way. I'm a complete... Like I said, I'm not joking when I say I'm a completionist at heart. Drake can back this up. Anytime I do a game, I 100% that game. I, I can't leave things undone. It's actually why I had a death yesterday because... Or on this... On the stream, because... Even though I finished, if you want to call it that, my stream without a death, I missed a quest where I locked it off and I wouldn't be able to do it and I couldn't handle that. I was like, nope, I can't do this. It's like, I need to go back and make sure that quest line isn't blocked off or it's going to drive me physically insane, like sick to my stomach. So I, I'm going to show you guys right now just how hard some of these missions can be. I'll go after Liara because, well, she's a pretty powerful biotic if I can get to her. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think uh, Razor Mane is insane. I don't think... I think it's taken me what? If you take away the four, maybe six months where I was away, 
and just focus on how long I played hardcore. It took me about three years now to get where I am. Oh no, no, this is fine, because I really want to get Liara, because she'll make some of the side missions a bit easier. But it'll give you an idea, because this is going to be the easier of the three main missions. It's one of those things where I think I can do it, but it's not going to be very pretty. Oh, of course first planet I find is one that can be checked on. That's okay. I'll do it. Level 1 pressure hazard. Why did that pop up? Stop being a pain in the neck, computer. Now, there's no way I'm going to try to do all of the side mission. No, no, I won't blame you for the deaths, because like I said, I just really want to get Liara. Why is it going so dark for me all of a sudden? Shargilla had... Oh, wait, I wasn't going to read that. I'm just going to... Now I'm going to go down a bit. I'll wait another two seconds, and then I'm going to go to the bottom. That way, if you guys want to read all that, you can just pause the stream and read it, because I'll put it up on YouTube after. No, I, I, I won't blame you for it being really rough, because you did give me the option of not doing it right now. Well, that's actually a way more balanced party. But let's go with that. So while I appreciate it, I really do want Liara. She'll make some of the side quests a little easier. Still not simple, but a little easier. So she kind of is worth a bit of the pain. But after that, I, I'm not going to go try Pharaoh. Show you how hard it is by trying to do Pharaohs or Novaria. Because at the level I'm at, I think I could get past them, but no. It would be an absolute nightmare. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to blame Siri for all the trouble in Code Vein when I get there. Because even though I put together a Mass Effect run that I... Well, how do I put it? I love Mass Effect, so it's still a fun game. But having to romance Ashley playing as a Sentinel and doing Insanity is just, well, insane. I would never do that as my own personal choice. But Code Vein sounds like she crafted a run from absolute nightmarish hell for me. Oh, beautiful. You see, I was about to say something, but I, I decided to bite my lip because I know it's just going to kick me in the ass and hard. So I'm not interested in saying the comment. But yeah, it's like every time I turn around, it's like, how can she make the code vein run even worse? And it's like, oh, never mind. She found a way. She's found two. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what I want to hear.
I wanted to hear that the run can get even more nightmarish than it already is. I have this strange feeling that I'm just going to be crying by the end of Code Vein. At this rate, it might take me so long to beat Code Vein that I might be able to stream, uh, what do you call it? No, no, series of person, Drake. I'll be crying before I even start. That is beautiful. That's what I wanted to hear. Code Vein is going to make me, is going to break me before I even get there. That's what I wanted to hear. I don't know if you know what uh, Code Vein is. I just left that up on the screen for a second so people can uh, read it on their own time if they want. But, uh... I don't know if you know what Code Vein is, Drake, but it's basically a anime version of Dark Souls. And Red and Siri have been building a run for me that's going to be just a nightmare. I think they really are trying to break my spirit with that run. This is basically just a kind warm-up in comparison. I'm pretty sure by the end I'm going to actually prefer to do this run again. I'll be like, please, just let me go back to the nightmare of the Mass Effect 3 run with Ashley. Either that or I'm just going to be curled up in a corner at some point during the run saying, please, just let me die. Yeah, the run is going to be Levels of uncomfortable that I, I'm not sure I'm ready for. But I'll do it. I mean... <laughs> Any other punks to kill? I think I I think I did a goober mistake. Yep, I put myself in another one of these missions.
Hey, stop shooting at me. Frickin' Kro- Frickin' Krogan. Nice try, pirate. Sorry, slavers are not fun. That's a lot of uh, loot. That was nice. Jeez. Oh, I could have blown up that fuel tank. That would have worked. Probably a little overkill, but still would have worked. This definitely isn't the planet that Liara is on, though. Oh, I screwed that up. Well, at least I get a second try. Okay, I, I can go now. There we go. I made it. I made it! Wall safe. Hard decryption. Oh, that's what I wanted to see. Let's check the ground level, see if that had a safe. And then I leave this planet, and we're going to find uh, where Liara is hiding. Oh yeah, I was just in here. Sometimes that happens, Drake. There's some uh, companies that have do multiple products, like movies and that, and uh, games. Perfect example would be uh, look at the League of Legends game, and there's a movie out too. Although they're different enough that I would say that they're not really the same property. Even though they 
are supposed to be based in the same world or whatever. Although Star Trek Online is supposed to be written and that by the same writers that are currently writing Star Trek shows, so that's supposed to be pretty much the same, so I don't get that one. Come on, get up that hill. Get up, you little engine that could. Get up there. Good little Mako. I knew you could do it. Actually, I didn't. I was just going to try anyway. All right. Oh, jeez, what was it at? I must have hit the wrong button again. I, I've done that before. It was at 10, right? I think it was at 10. I gotta be so careful. My finger sometimes slips the way I have it and it'll hit the button that controls that. I should put it on the other side of the mouse or the other side of my keyboard so that there's no way I could accidentally hit it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 10. That'll be the second time I've done it. Thankfully, Red has been there to uh, correct me both times. Because I wouldn't have even have noticed until I got into a death, and then it would have confused me. Because I'd be like, wait, zero deaths? No, that's not right. What the heck death am I on now? Because I would know that it's definitely not zero deaths. I'd be all like, I was doing good, but not that good. straight down and then I can go find Liara. Sucks that I can't romance Liara though. Maybe next year or in a couple of months I'll do a full Mass Effect run in Insanity again but I'll play at the with no restricting rules, just get to show off the whole story. But I kind of wanted to do an Ashley run at some point anyway, because she's like one of the only people I haven't romanced, because I generally consider her nuke fodder. So I never saw a point. It's like, well, why bother? As soon as I get the opportunity, I'm going to feed her to a nuke, so no point in getting really attached to her. And the biggest reason I always decided that she was nuke fodder is because her attitude stinks.
this is the only part that some people can find boring is to get as much experience as you can so that you aren't you know completely destroyed on your runs you got to pick up all these little uh, minerals in that and that can sometimes take a while to find even though people have basically told me I'm wrong about it, it feels like they're, those kind of things are just like random every time. Because I will swear that there's a, like a node in a particular place, I'll go there and it's not there and I'll be like, what the heck? But it looks like the planet is clear, so let's get out of this. Let's get off this world. But I think that Liara is the best story to go through because her story actually takes you through all. Uh, her story takes you through all of the. Uh, all three games. She's with you the entire time. Which isn't true for any of the others. Oh, well, actually, no. Tally will stay with Talia will stay with you for the three games, so I just never I did try to romance her once, but I did it before they did the Legendary Edition patch, so it was a pretty uh, lame romance. Apparently, with this version, the Legendary Edition, it got a remake and it's actually pretty good now. I don't know how true that is, but maybe one day I'll find out even just for myself. That, uh, did I check Polar? Yeah, I did. That was the one where I was scanning it. And I did just check that, so... She's not in Artemis Tau. I think she's in Sparta, so I'm gonna go to Athens first. I'll know which planet she's on the second I see it, because you'll see like a little picture of a ruin instead of the planet. It wouldn't be on this planet, it's way too close to the sun. And again, I'm just going slow between when I'm picking a planet, just so if people do care about the uh, flavor text, they can read all of that, because then they can just pause the stream and look. And since no one would really watch the first Mass Effect run I did, well, I just read everything for every planet. is clear. No, no sauce. Almost sounds like Gnosis. That's from uh, Xenosaga 3. Probably one of my favorite games of all time. Well, Xenosaga is one of my favorite series of all time. I would absolutely play that for people, but I can't because it only ever came out for a PS2, and I don't have a PS2. My brother has a PS2, but I don't have one. I guess I could borrow it, 
and play the series. But yeah, that's... I know a lot of people who don't like the Xeno Saga. Or Xeno... Yeah, the Xeno Saga series. Because it's more of a interactive movie than it is an actual game. Okay, yeah. Because I'm all... I would love to do Xeno Saga again, like, or play that again, because I freaking love that series, but it's more like an interactive movie than an actual game, so some people are not too crazy about it. But then there's me. I could play that game, like, every single day and not get tired of it. Because the story in it is just freaking amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. And I could make a challenge run for that one, too. The only challenge would be that whenever I have Cosmos, I just don't use her. I just don't put her in the party. You have no idea how hard that would make that game. Because Cosmos is just unbelievably overpowered in that game. In fact, it's funny. Even though she's like one of the main characters you see on the box, they try to give you actual use of her like very, very, very sparingly, like very rarely. And I get the reason, because when you put her in the party, it's like you just win. That That's all there is to it. You, can't really lose with her. All my toughest fights in the game that have really uh, pushed me to my limits are fights where I don't have Cosmos. Anytime I have Cosmos, it's like, well, it's a boss fight. Oh, look at that. The boss is dead. Moving on. The only thing I don't get about Cosmos is she's an android, a full battle system, not even an android person. Well, yeah, she looks like an android, but she's essentially a capable of morphing full-size battle system meant for uh, fighting the Gnosis, and I was fine with that, but then every single time they did a new, what do you call it, a new game, like Xenosaga 1, then they did Xenosaga 2, and then Xenosaga 3. Each version of it, she got uh, either bigger or more fleshier looking boobs. And I'm like, but she's an android, what does she need boobs for? That always irked me, because I was like, that's unnecessary, come on. Wait a minute, I was in Sparta, why did I not s Where the heck is she hiding? I went to Macedonia. I know she's in this sector. that planet that's a metallic was it it was there jeez how did i miss that planet yeah see this this is where she's at this is the final base if you want to call it that or whatever on the planet it's a relatively small uh, planet Let's go. Now you'll get to see what the fights can really be like. I'll take those two because I want pretty average. 
Well, it's funny. According to the stats page, it says that it should be a pretty mediocre party, but they're actually really powerful. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Come on. Doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. I gotta be careful. Because rounding one of these corners, we get into a nice, good firefight against, well, another tank. And this run actually has two, or is it three, uh, bosses? I think it's two. Uh-oh, there's a drop ship. Come on! Stop hitting me! Buggers? Oh, come on. Seriously? Your shields... Your hit points were gone. You had to have, like, maybe one hit point. That doesn't count. Alright. Oh yeah, this is a big base. Only a fool punches a map that did come We should sneak around and pull its tail. I agree with you. That's why we're not trying to fight this thing face to face, my friend. There we go. Now I gotta get this other explodey thing. Oh, I'm such a good driver. Get around the corner. Get. There we go. One more survivor somewhere. Actually, there's three more survivors, and I know where they are. There's a monster in here, I think. No. See, this is why I don't like having... What do you call it? I don't like 
or this is why I like having a scanner on my weapons because I can't see the creature but in the Mako I could see it because the Mako has much better uh, scanners than I do all right well yeah this one will have a monster in it right at the end of this corner and around well around the corner really Good night, flashlight head. I can't believe it. It actually is still an insanity difficulty. I just had to check there because... A lot of these creatures have just been dying in one shot. It's like, what the hell? It's like, what the heck? How is he dying so fast? I don't even have any points in sh Oh, I got uh, Carnage, but that's as far as I took shotguns. Oh, I see. So that's 10, 20. Uh, it does 40% more damage with the shotgun. I get it. There, unity is good to have. Now, you want to become an advanced assassin, Garrus. That's what you're good at. You're going to take advanced carnage. Because that's what you do. I almost gave you advanced immunity would have been nice to get anything in there no all of them are before they joined the citadel council the salarian's most potent military tool was a small reconnaissance team known as the league of one their primary training was in espionage and assassination Never more than a dozen strong, the team was adept at infiltrating the tightest defenses and eliminating all necessary obstacles. Only a few top members of government and military were privy to the League's identities. League members wore no distinguishing garments and held no particular rank. The only evidence of their participation in the League was a small medallion presented to each member upon induction. This secrecy was maintained until the formation of the Council. In an effort to dispel rumors and appease their new Asari partners, the Salarian Union released all classified documents pertaining to the League. The League of One was suddenly exposed and in danger of being hunted by enemies of the Salarians. Before any harm could be done, the team mysteriously disappeared. Most assumed this was... Most assumed this was a convenient lie to help hide their identities. But a few months later, the inner cabinet was murdered. Though there was no incriminating evidence, it was clear who was responsible. Realizing the threat posed by this rogue outfit, the special task group dispatched a team of hunters. When they didn't return, the STG dispatched ten of its brightest operators with broad discretionary powers. Only two returned. They reported no evidence of the League. No further incidents were reported, and it was assumed that the League was wiped out. Some recently declassified documents, however, have suggested there may have been a 13th member who eluded the Salarian military. We just finished reading about Protheans, the data disks. Despite the evidence confirming the existence of the Protheans, little is known about their culture and society. From time to time, dig sites will yield new clues, but after 50,000 years of decay, little value is unearthed. Or little of value is unearthed. Recent research has focused on the discovery of Prothean data disks. On their own, they are frail and rare, rarely found in one piece. Occasionally, however, an intact disk will be discovered within a console or reading device. To date, 
Over three dozen disks have been recovered, and a few of those have been restored to the point where researchers can begin analyzing them. Though it may be some time before scientists discover a way to transfer the data off the disks, they are currently considered the most tangible leads for learning more about the Prothean culture. And now we're on to, yes, Geth, Armatures. Armatures are quadruple all-terrain heavy weapons platforms, akin to the armored fighting vehicles of other races. Geth being synthetic intelligences, armatures are not crude vehicles, but intelligent entities capable of independent decision-making and learning. Armatures are equipped with heavy kinetic barriers. Their main cannon, mounted on the articulated head turret, appears to be a highly efficient conventional mass accelerator. It is capable of firing in anti-personnel and anti-tank modes. Some amateurs carry drones into battle, presumably for reconnaissance purposes. Others host a swarm of insect-sized repair microbots. And yes, we're about to see an amateur up real close and personal. <clears throat> yeah, just now I felt the need to show that the difficulty is still on insanity because that last guy went down with a single shot. I'm not, and even with the description of the shotgun, it still seems weird to me that he would go down that easy. I might have to stop using shotguns. Well, shotguns are really only good at really close range. Once the enemy get or from long distances, they're pretty much useless. I wouldn't say entirely useless, but they are pretty lackluster. But in tight spaces, they're beautiful. Too bad in uh, Mass Effect 2, I don't think there are shotguns anymore. Yeah, in Mass Effect 2, instead of a shotgun, the infiltrator, or not infiltrator, what do you call it? The Sentinel gets a submachine gun and a pistol. Oh, and in Mass Effect 2, equipment like I'm finding doesn't exist. Wait, which way? I always get confused once I open the door. Which way do I want to go? Oh, that didn't help at all. I'm going to go this way, see where I end up. If I don't see something shooting at me relatively soon. Oh, wait, no, I know which way I have to go. That's where I came from, I remember, because that's the, uh... Oh yeah, that's where the turrets were. So I want to go through this side door, that's right. Alright. See, like I told you, my sense of direction is absolutely horrifying. That's why, yes, I know that code vein once I get to, uh... The cathedral, which is the uh, labyrinth level. I know that's going to be hilarious for some to watch because I'll be stuck there for a bit. Although, like I said, it could be interesting, too, because I'd say about 70% of the time, whenever I get to a brand new 
maze, I run through it no problems. Problem is, once I've gone through it once, I never find my way through it again. Don't ask me why. That's always been how it is with me. Used to be hilarious when it, it would be a dungeon or whatever where finding your way through was considered a very hard task. And my brother would be like, oh, you're never going to find your way out. You know, knowing my uh, way of... Or my direction sense. But then I'd run in and run through it, no problem. Get to the other side and be just fine. But then, if I ever went back and I tried to go through it again, not a chance. I always got completely lost. He could never understand that part. He would always be like, wait a minute, you had no problems getting there. Why can't you find your way through now? And I'd always be like, I don't know, that's just me. You see how this thing's wrecking me? In a second, we have to fight this thing in, like, what do you call it? In a little bit, we're going to be fighting this as a boss. Like, outside of our vehicle. This thing can wreck a tank, and we have to take it out on foot. That's the kind of levels you get. Did I just get stuck? No, my finger just slipped off the button again. game's like, oh, so you want to see me make it harder? And I'm like, sure. It's like, now you can fight these tanks on foot. I'm like, wait, what? I mean, I get it to a degree. If I could just take the tank, wouldn't be a fight, really. I would just hop out and kill. And this is the easy part of the run, because this is the part where you can use your tank. Once I get through to the other side of this, I think it's all on foot from there. Gosh, this just makes me... Yep, here's where I have to get out and actually run. Oh boy, I'm cracking my fingers already because this is going to be the nightmare part. Alright, let's go. Oh, I did level, so I better use that. And I got a whole bunch of gear from that fight. Do I want to... I don't want an assault rifle. But I will take that Firestorm. Thank you. Oh no, I'll actually take the Cantana. It has a little bit less accuracy. But it does a fair bit more damage. And I'll give one to Rex too. Garrus, you don't need a shotgun, do you? I'll give you one anyway, but... You kind of want to go with this for some reason, even though it's not your specialty. 
Now let's give you a good sniper rifle. Maybe you'll choose to use the sniper rifle. That would be nice. You can use that one. Okay. Nothing to see there. Nothing to see there. Oh wait, I got better... Oh, that's not better armor. That's better armor. Now what do I have there? Energize Weaving 4. Why would I have Energize Weaving over Medical Interface? That doesn't make sense. Garrus, you've got Medical Interface. just became a complete monster. I love it. I'm doing pretty good for the secondary plot stuff. Alright. I'm just gonna mark all entries. Because I just don't know which one it was that was glowing like that, and that'll drive me nuts. I want advanced barrier, because that'll make me a little tougher. Don't really care about throw, but I wouldn't mind having advanced lift. Alright, Garrus, you're going to take advanced assassination, and we're going to start leveling you until you can use medium armor at least. You don't really need shoot boost, but I'll give you that. You don't really need throw, but I'll give I'll give it to you. Alright, perfect. Now let's see how much this hurts. Rocket Trooper. Okay, got one of these light bulb heads down. Or what do they call them? Flashlight heads, that's right. Come on, flashlight head. Alright, I know how I'm going to get him. The power of the shotgun compel you. There we go. Negative contact.
Garrus is the, would have been the better sniper. But he refuses to use the sniper rifle for some reason. I don't even know if I'm hitting this thing. Oh, I am. Okay, good. Yeah, one's dead. He's still getting uh, detected by a shield. Oh, he's down. There we go. Another one down. Oh, sugar and spice. Good to go. my shotgun. There it is. There's that everybody. Gosh damn that was close. Oh there's one more. Problem solved. Another one. It's a rocket troop too yet. There we go, ha! I think he killed himself more than All I hit him. Alright, here we go. Boss fight time. I'm saving for this for sure. No! Oh, yeah, I saw that coming. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, that's a bad spot to stand, apparently. Hey, Sky, how are you doing? I'm just seeing how many times I can die. Dang it, I 
hate this. Let's try no, let's try to rip apart your armor. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Did you literally just walk around me? You did. Not a fan of this. I think I got him. Yeah, I got the guy. Alright, good. Got one more. There's another one down. I think I might actually have it now. Dang it, I didn't get the finishing, I didn't get the kill shot off. Now the bugger's got his shield up there. There we go. There. One more down. Come on, get out of the way, Garrus. Dude, you're in my way. Oh, there's the boss. I was gonna say, where the heck is the boss? Oh, I can shoot through that target. All right. There we go, got you. There we go, you're gone. Now it's just this big dude. Sorry, there's a little guy up here too. It can be a problem. He's gone. Now we have the boss. It thankfully doesn't look like he can get through here. Now I know I'm hitting him because the little white X reticle. It appears when you get a hit. 
it wasn't for that, I, I would think I was doing nothing to him. Come on. I could probably get closer. But I'm afraid that's what will kill me. I'll just keep taking your leg out. No, that's too far for me to hit with that. Definitely not going to hit with that. It says there's another creature, but I don't see him. Or it, really, because it's, it's a machine, not a person. Come on. I probably shouldn't move because that's probably where I'm going to die. But I really want to see how much damage I've done to this thing. The only way to really tell is to take a risk and move up. Alright. If I die, I die. Oh, I had it to about half hit points. And there's what I thought was going to happen. Dang it! I just had to be patient. See, that's what I hate about fighting a tank. All it needs is to hit me once. Come on, nope, nope, this is not good. Well, he's coming straight to me. Oh, come on. Um, okay, run. Both of you get back here to safety. Sugar and spice. My entire team is down. Okay, got one more dead. Oh, there's the other guy. There we go, he's dead. not get hit by that. Oh, 
Okay, he's dead. I see a jam device, which is bad. Yeah, I can't hit that from there. I don't care what the game thinks. Okay, that's that ruin. Should be 14, thank you. Why the heck is it going down all the time? Well, I know why it is. I got him. Wait, you said 14. Why did it not go up? I thought I hit. There we go, sorry. Thank you for keeping an eye on that. No, I'm not trying to cheat it. Uh, I am legitimately just hitting the wrong... I know what I... I know which button it is, and I know where I can move it, so it shouldn't happen again. I'll do that at the as soon as I get this down, or at my next step, whichever happens first. I know exactly where to move that button so that this doesn't happen again. Come on. There we go. Gotcha. Dang it, I didn't get the kill shot. Oh, there we go, I did get the kill shot. I think that's hitting him. Although I think I'm safe here to make the change. I'm doing it. If I die, I die, whatever. Um, let's see. It should be that. There. It should never happen again. I'm pushing the button to test it. Good, it didn't happen. I pushed the button that it used to be. It didn't reset it, so there shouldn't be any issues with it now. Now, the only one left is this boss. I wonder if I should... one more guy other than the boss. You got that. Oh, that was bad. That could have been so bad. Let's go with sabotage. Go with that.
boss is almost wrecked. Actually, this is only boss one. There's another boss that I think is technically harder. not what I was hoping for. Oh crap, I even had the wrong rounds in there. That was way more intense than I was hoping. But... 14 deaths isn't too bad. I'm still way uh, doing way better than my previous record. It's not enough deaths. I don't know. I mean... Well, I think your bloodlust will start getting better fed in Mass Effect 2 and 3. I'm not worried about that part. I'm pretty sure that... Die more. Honestly, I thought I was going to be dying a lot more. Like, I'm not even kidding. I am playing like a freaking pro this last two days. I don't know what the heck's going on. You would think I'm like pro MLG or something. I'm not even kidding. I shouldn't have deleted those uh, videos a while ago, but if I showed you my original run through here on uh, Insanity, the last two missions I redid, like just now, by the end of those, I was up to 150 deaths. And this time, I think the two missions before I got to this one killed me a grand total of ten times. Still not exactly like pro level, but compared to where I was at, that's insane. Oh, I got a little too cocky. I thought I was fine. Well, there you go. There's another death. Hey, wait. Why is it not updating now? Why is it being a little... Why is it being a little tool? Don't tell me you closed. Oh, you son of a... My program closed on me.
Oh, that's why. No, that's not why. Let me try that again. Why is that not working all of a sudden? I need to get that working. There, it went up. Let's see if it's working now. Yep. There we go. Okay, it's back to working. Well, are you happy? I had a death that I wasn't expecting. In fact, I didn't want to die there. I thought I was good. I literally died there because I got way too confident. I was like, I got this. And then of course I didn't have that. See what happens when I think I really am a pro? I'm like, oh man, I'm so awesome. And then I got completely annihilated. And I can't even blame anyone for that. That was all me. There, I'll quick save. Because the quick saving isn't cheating, because it just lets me start from here. But if I die, it still goes on the counter, so it's not like... It's not like I'm trying to find a quicker... or a less painful way out of here. I could technically cheat this part. Oh wait, I don't have to cheat. I could just hide behind here, which I didn't do last time. Those were definitely the wrong bullets for that job. It may seem like it was the right tool, but I'm using uh, poisonous rounds, or venom rounds, instead of uh, synthetic rounds. Poison rounds are great for the next boss, but terrible when I run into machines. Uh, I think that's why I died. I was getting a little too far ahead of myself. And we're about to meet Liara. My absolute favorite uh, in-game wifey. with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Venezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. How'd you end up in there? I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. Your mother is working with Saren. Whose uh, side are you? What? I may be Venezia's daughter, but I'm nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. 
We just need to figure some way past this energy field. It's a Prothean barrier curtain. I knew it would keep me safe from the Geth. But when I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. We'll find some way to help you. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. I think I chose wrong discussion options or however you want to word it. Because she says some of the most bizarre crap. My favorite one is if you accuse her of working with Benezia, she's like, but I'm stuck in here and I can't move a muscle as she's moving around, moving her like head and face and everything all over the place. It's kind of like, I don't know, from where I'm standing, you look like you're moving pretty bloody good. Like, the first time I got here, I was like, I trust nobody. There we go. Kill shot. Where's the next one? Oh, I know where he is. He's in this corner. It's gonna make it a little hard to get to in this one. Sorry, uh, I'm not really taking a break. I just have uh, I was just responding to a what do you call it text message from my mother. She's in a bit of a mood today. That's okay. I think under the circumstances she's allowed to be in a bit of a mood. Somehow I lived. That was not the way you should do that. I lost sight of that mom or creature and I decided to just run in with the shotgun anyway. Good thing shotguns are really, really deadly in, like, you know, close quarters combat. Or else that would have just murdered me.
that's why I had to check the uh, settings because it doesn't feel like I'm on uh, insanity, but I am. So I was like, okay, um, sure. Oh, I hate this kind of mini game. And now we're on to the final boss of this spot. Probably die at least another time or two. It's against a Krogan, so what do I expect? They have this really nasty uh, tendency of making themselves invis invisible, invincible, and then charging you. I hate fighting oh, Krogan. How did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. We have to get you out of here before more Geth arrive. Yes, you're right. I've seen enough of them to last a lifetime. That button should shut down my containment field. the boss and this I, will be I the last fight tonight this. why would the geth come after me do you think benezia is involved saren's looking for the conduit you're a prothean expert obviously he wants you to help him find it the conduit but i don't know what the hell was that these ruins are not stable that mining laser must have triggered a seismic event we have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker, get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister. Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. If I die in here, I'll kill him. <laughs> no, Rex. If you die in here, you'll be dead. I love Rex. He's he's amazing. Ashley's gonna love this. I go off on a mission and I bring back yet another alien into the base. She hates aliens. Surrender. Or don't. That would be more fun. In case you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for getting rid of those energy fields for us. Had the doctor over. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. She'll stay with us, thanks. Not an option. Saren wants her, and he always gets what he wants. Kill him. Spare the Asari if you can. None doesn't matter. Like I said, those the firepower I chose works really well on the boss, but it's not so good against these machines. Dang it, now I gotta switch to a, bit, a different weapon. Okay, you're coming back? Perfect. All right, last mob. I think I can do this in just manual. 
Come on, move, move, move! There we go. Perfect! Ha <laughs> ha, that's the way it's supposed to be done. Ah, it reset again! One more time. The button that is. Oh, it did revert back. That's why. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died okay, out there it's set and the right pilot now. is making jokes. There we go. Joker pulled our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there. And not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. How old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. If the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Yay. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. Only two more days of my like antibiotics. Like all civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines. The Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. 
but the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be a remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Okay, this isn't helping us find Saren or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit or Saren. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her bionics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate? Or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Liera's on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin, was that really necessary, Shepard? The Geth were crawling all over those ruins. We were lucky to make it out alive. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. I feel like telling those toadies, if you think you can do it better, then by all means. I'll go back and get a nice rest, and you guys can do all the fighting. The Prothean Beacon downloaded its knowledge into Lieutenant Commander Shepard on Eden Prime, causing confusing dreams and visions. While the imagery is becoming clearer with time, the meaning of the beacon communication remains elusive. It has been suggested that Prothean data recording is highly dependent on a certain point of view, what Carl Jung described as the collective unconsciousness. The cipher needed to comprehend the images implanted in Shepard's mind is the cultural knowledge of a Prothean, the archetypes, biological instincts, and common experiences universal to the race. Since the Protheans have been dead for millennia, it may be impossible to acquire this cipher. Well, yeah, it sounds pretty bloody impossible, but... The Geth models collectively dubbed Hoppers by Alliance forces are electronic warfare platforms. They can project electromagnetic radiation across a broad spectrum as an offensive weapon. They can also perform cyber warfare attacks against the onboard computers of body armor hard suits and weapons adversely affecting their performance. The structure of hoppers consists of an advanced and highly elastic artificial mus muscle material. This allows a hopper to compress its entire body for powerful leaps. Hoppers also have thousands of mo molecule scale barbs on the surface of their hands and feet, which are used to cling on to walls and ceilings. Hoppers are very difficult targets, leaping from one surface to another in rapid succession. The Quarians have no record of any Geth models similar to Hopper's. This new morphotype must have been developed over the last 300 years by the Geth themselves. This is troubling proof that the Geth are continuing to move towards technological singularity. Experts in synthetic life are intrigued that Hopper's appear to be even more organic than the baseline Geth. The identified subtypes of Hopper's have been codenamed Sapper, Stalker, and Ghost. Well, that sounds reassuring. And I can level again. Uh, now the question is, what do I want to get? 
Definitely want to get advanced lift. Do I want advanced throw though? I don't really use advanced throw. I don't really use advanced, or I don't use carnage either really. But I'm gonna go grab master carnage eventually, so. All right. Good enough. Now, I'm gonna go around my ship, I'm gonna talk to all my friends, and then I'm going to end for the night. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna continue on. Probably doing the other planets, doing all the side missions. And then we'll continue with the story and finish the game. I hope to finish Mass Effect 1 in maybe four or five episodes. Now, I'm, there's definitely no way I'm going to finish Mass Effect 2 that fast, but that's the hope Commander, for Mass Effect 1. Good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing that I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts, organs mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market, but they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. It turns out there was more going on than we first realized. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample that ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. There was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. My medics found incisions all over his body. inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. 
They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties. The ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. We just used them to make more warnings. They wouldn't listen. Incoming well, it's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion. All right, and another codex. The Turian homeworld, homeworld Palavan, has a metal poor core, generating a weak magnetic field and allowing more solar radiation into the atmosphere. To deal with this, most forms of life on Palavan evolved some form of metallic exoskeleton to protect themselves. Their reflective plate-like skin makes Turians less susceptible to long-term, low-level radiation exposure, but they do not possess any sort of natural armor. A Turian's thick skin does not stop projectiles and directed energy bolts. Although life on Pal Pavilion is carbon-based and oxygen-breathing, it is built on dextro-amino acids. This places the Turians in a distinct minority on the galactic stage. The Quarians are the only other known sapient dextroprotein race. The food of humans, Asari, or Salarians, who evolved in lev levo amino acid based biospheres, will at best pass through Turian systems without providing any nutrition. At worst, it will trigger an allergic reaction that can be fatal if not immediately treated. Well, that sucks. But, yes, we've got a quest from him. Let's talk with uh, Rex, and then we'll talk to Ashley, and then we're done for the night. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Solarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. He told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes, a meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from and 
where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life. But not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? No. Now that I have my family's armor again, there's nothing left for me. So long, Rex. Shepard. And another codex. The harsh Krogan homeworld conditioned the Krogan psychology for toughness just as it did the body. Krogan have always had a tendency to be selfish, unsympathetic, and blunt. They respect strength and self-reliance and are neither surprised nor offended by treachery. The weak and selfless do not live long. In their culture, looking out for number one is simply a matter of course. After their defeat in the rebellions, the very concept of Krogan leadership was discredited. Where a warlord could once command enough power to bring entire solar systems to heal and become overlord, these days it is rare for a single leader to have more than a thousand warriors swear allegiance to him. Most Krogan trust and serve no one but themselves. This solitary attitude stems in part from a deep sense of fatalism and futility. A profound social effect of the genophage that caused Krogan numbers to dwindle to a relative handful. Not only are they angry that the entire galaxy seems out to get them, the Krogan are also generally pessimistic about their race's chances of survival. The surviving Krogan see no point to building for the future. There will be no future. The Krogan live with an attitude of kill, pillage, and be selfish, for tomorrow we die. Well, that seems very healthy. Not really. Actually, that seems very unhealthy. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, Sid. Tell me you didn't hear that. Afraid I did. Shoot me now. One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop the family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized. He never made it above serviceman third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us though. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. You're lucky to have a close family. Oh, sorry, I forgot about your family situation. Or lack thereof. Relax, Williams. I've dealt with it. Ask me to clear a bunker of armed hostiles? No problem. Dealing with a foot in my mouth? 
Not so good with it. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen Hawaii away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lent did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her finger, though. So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. -hand. You said all of your sisters oh, learned self-defense? Landed pistol. Ah, they do great things to her figure, though. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight-up puncher. When he swung, she just... she wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was gonna end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? But Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. I didn't know you liked classical literature. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching them. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Everyone has the right to believe what they want. It says so on the Alliance chart. Only with fancier words. I'm glad you're open-minded about it. I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. 
Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. What's your opinion on the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? Not everyone's as close to their family as you are. Yeah, that's true. It's funny, I never really thought about that before. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. All right, let's see if, uh, what's her name wants to talk. Talia. Tally. We'll see if she wants to talk. And then we'll go check on, uh, Liara. And then we're done. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Starin's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So were you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out again. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own independently, but I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Saren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict. A military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. 
almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago, some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it. Not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you later. Alright. Another codex. Two more. Quarians, Law and Defense. Although the Conclave establishes civil law much as any planet-based democracy, enforcement and trials are more unique. After the flight from the Geth, there were few constables to police the millions of civilians aboard the fleet, so the Navy parceled out marine squads to maintain order and enforce the law. Today, Quarian Marines have evolved training and tactics akin to civilian police, but remain adept at combat in the confined spaces of a starship and fully under the command of the military. Once taken into custody, the accused is brought before the ship's captain for judgment. While the ship's counsel may make recommendations, tradition holds that the captain has absolute authority in matters of discipline. Most are lenient, assigning additional or more odious maintenance tasks aboard the ship. Persistent recidivists are accidentally left on the next, uh, next habitable world. This practice of abandoning criminals on other people's planets is a point of friction between the Quarians and the systems they pass through. Captains rarely have another choice. With space and resources at a premium, supporting a non-productive prison population is not an option. In the, years, or in the early years, many Quarian freighters were armed and used as irregular privateers. Civilian ships still show a strong preference for armament, making them unpopular targets for pirates. Though many have rebuilt their military, there are still mere hundreds of warships to protect tens of thousands of ships. The Quarian Navy follows strict routines of patrol and takes no chances. If the intent of an approaching ship can't be ascertained, they shoot to kill. Well... The Alliance military is of great concern to the galaxy. At first contact with the Turians, they were completely inexperienced. Turian disdain changed to respect after the relief of Shang-Chi, where the humans surprised them with novel technologies and tactics. The human devotion to understanding and adapting to modern space warfare stunned the Dade Council racer, races. For hundreds of years, they had lived behind secure walls of long-proven technologies and tactics. The Council regards the Alliance as a sleeping giant. Less than 3% of human volunteers, or less than 3% of humans volunteer to serve in their military, a lower proportion than any other species. While competent, Alliance soldiers are neither as professional as the Turians nor as skilled as the Asari. Their strength lies in fire support, flexibility, and speed. They make up for lack of numbers with sophisticated technological support, such as VIs, drones, artillery, and electronic warfare, and emphasis on mobility and individual initiative. Their doctrine is not based on absorbing and dis dishing out heavy shocks like the Turians and Krogan. Rather, they bypass enemy strong points and launch deep into their rear, cutting supply lines and destroying headquarters and support units, leaving enemies to wither on the vine. On defense, the human military is a rapid reaction force that lives by the Sun Tzu maxim, he who tries to defend everything defends nothing. 
Garrisons are intended for scouting rather than combat, avoiding engagement to observe and report on invaders using drones. The token garrisons of human colonies make it easy for alien powers to secure them, for which the Alliance media criticizes the military. However, the powerful fleet stationed at phase gate nexuses such as Arcturus are such a few are just a few hours or days from any colony within their spheres of responsibility. In the event of an attack, they respond with overwhelming force. All right. And wait, there's another that I missed. What did I miss? Ah, Quarian's religion. The ancient Quarians practiced ancestor worship. Even after abandoning faith for secular, secularism, Quarians continued to revere the wisdom of elders. As time passed and technology advanced, they inevitably turned their knowledge to preserving the personalities and memories of the elderly as computer virtual intelligences. These recordings became a repository of knowledge and wisdom stored in a central data bank and available through any extranet connection. They held no illusions that this was a form of immortality. Like all virtual intelligences, their electronically preserved ancestors were not truly sapient. This was considered a surmountable problem. Sapience could surely be reduced to simple mathematics. The Quarians began exhaustive research into creating artificial intelligence so they could learn to escape the bounds of mortality and give their ancestor records true awareness. Unfortunately, the life the Quarians created did not accept the same truths they did, but Geth destroyed the ancestor databanks when they took over. In the centuries since they evacuated their homeworld, most Quarians have returned to religion in various forms. Many believe the rise of the Geth and the destruction of their ancestors were chastisement for arrogantly forsaking the old ways and venerating self-made idols. Others have a more philosophical outlook, believing that their race was indeed arrogant, but no supernatural agency lay behind the Geth revolt. Rather, the Quarian's actions wrought their own doom. Either way, every Quarian would agree that their own hubris cost them their homeworld. Well, that part's true. And I'm just gonna go with that. And now we are going to talk with Liara. And then I think I'm done for the night. Come on, Liara. Man, it's gonna suck having to turn her down. But, like I've said, I had to do a Ashley run at some point, seeing as she's literally the only one I haven't had a relationship with in the game because I really don't like her. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on the uh, I enlisted right now, but humanity needs the alliance. So there's still we nothing new expanding. from her. I should go. How heartbreaking. There's Liara. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought aligning herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. This hurts you, doesn't it? 
None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Venezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the Union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the Union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long-term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapien species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Do you know who Matriarch Venezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Venezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you, but couldn't. Something could have happened. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Venezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Alright, let's check the codex. Because of their long lifespan, Asari tend to have a long view, not common in other races. When they encounter a new species or situation, the Asari are more comfortable with an extended period of passive observation and study than immediate action. They are unfazed that some of their investments or decisions may not pay off for decades or centuries. Matriarchs can seem to make incomprehensible decisions. But their insight is evident when their carefully laid plans come to fruition. In interstellar relations, this long view manifests in an unspoken policy of centralism. Or centrism. The Asari instinctively seek to maintain stable balances of, of economic, political, and military power. Traditionally, Asari spread their influence through cultural domination and intellectual superiority. They invite new species of advanced development to join the galactic community, 
knowing that their ideals and beliefs will inevitably influence the existing culture. Anything else? No. Okay, perfect. Alright, so that's going to be it for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow and at 1, between 1 and 6, and we will uh, get going on some of those side missions, the uh, planets, start clearing them out. Once we get through all that, we'll continue with the story and finish it. Like I said, the goal is to finish Mass Effect 1 in the next 3 or 4 episodes, maybe 5. We'll see. And then we'll move immediately right into Mass Effect 2. Because uh, Mass Effect Legendary is a trilogy. So we're going to do Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Back to back. Just boom, boom, boom. As one run. So I hope you all enjoy it. And I will see you tomorrow. So take care.